Hello everyone and welcome. In this video, we're going to show you how to set up dual CMG active failover with one accessory server. Before we get into the configuration, there's a few prerequisites that we have to verify before we begin. Now starting with the first one, both CMGs should not be configured. This can be verified by going to the configuration tab in admin portal. Under the company name field, this should be blank. If they have already been configured, they will both need to be reset through factory defaults by running a recovery. Next, both CMGs should be running the exact same version. Both CMGs should have a host name set. Both CMGs should have a static IP address set. Both CMGs and the accessory server need to be in the same VLAN. Both CMGs time and time zone must be set correctly. CMG 1's IP address, subnet mask, and gateway must be set. CMG 2 IP address, subnet mask, and gateway must be set. Accessory server, the IP address, subnet mask, and gateway must also be set. The virtual IP address for the core cluster needs to be obtained from the network team. Make sure this is a free IP and shouldn't be used for any other device. Lastly, both CMGs and the accessory server should be powered on and plugged into the network. With our prerequisites now verified, our next step is to either remote desktop or go directly to the CMG server. Once there, we want to verify the host name and the IP address. Also, while verifying the IP address and subnet mask as well as host name information, make sure that the secondary network port is also set to disabled. Lastly, we want to verify that the date and time zone are set correctly. Moving on to our second CMG server, here named CMG2, we're going to do the exact same process and verify the information that is there. This is the same thing that we did for CMG1. Now with both our prerequisites verified, our CMG1 and CMG2 properly configured and ready to go, we're going to move on to setting up the dual CMG active failover with one accessory server. A very important note here is that once this process is complete, the CMG's IP address can no longer be changed. The next step is to open up a web browser and type in the IP address of the first CMG server. In our case, that is 192.168.5.10. The default credentials for that are going to be admin for the username and admin for the password. If this is the first time that you're logging into the system, the password will need to be changed. Click on change password. At this point, you want to enter a new password for the system. This requires entering the old password first of admin. Passwords must be alphanumeric and contain at least one numeric character. In our example, we changed it to admin123. Once done, click Save New Password. With the password now updated, 
This will take you to the configuration page. Fill out all information available on the configuration page. Enter the company name. Once the company name has been entered, it cannot be changed. Next, enter the site name. After entering the site name, check multiple cores. We are selecting this option because in our example, we're using two CMGs. Once that's been done, enter the core or CMG virtual IP address. In our example, the virtual IP address is going to be 192.168.5.13. Next, enter the IP address of the first core or CMG. In our case, that is 192.168.5.10. Next, click Add Another. We want to enter here the second core or CMG, which is 192.168.5.11. When doing this, make sure my core cluster is load balanced using Video Expert Accessory Server is checked. Once the core information has been entered, next we'll add the media gateways. This process is the same as when we added the cores. This time you want to make sure that there's a check mark in my system uses multiple media gateways. When adding the CMGs, make sure that we check mark commission device. Next, let's configure the routing protocol. In our example, we're going to use multicast. Multicast is extremely popular in larger installations. The definitions here, where it says source to MG is the camera to the media gateway. Where it says MG to client, that's the media gateway to the client. In this case, op center, or more commonly referred to as the viewing station. If you choose unicast, all cameras will be streamed through the CMG. When you choose multicast, all cameras will be directly streamed to the op center by passing the CMG. This creates no load on the CMG. In our example, we're going to go multicast to multicast. Once selected, click Save Configuration. This process will take several minutes to complete. Once done, it will display the message, your system has been successfully updated. For the purposes of this video, that time has been shortened. With the configuration successfully configured, we now want to click on the Device tab. At the Device tab, verify that both the core and media gateway are listed as commissioned. Next, we want to open a browser and go to the IP address of the second CMG. In our example, that is 192.168.5.11. Once here, we want to log in using the same username and password as CMG1. We want to verify all the settings look the exact same as CMG1. In our example, it does. With our settings now verified on both CMGs, the next step is to open up a new browser window and head to our accessory server. The accessory server IP address is 192.168.5.12 in our example. Once here, we want to enter the username of admin with a password of admin and then click Login. Once successfully logged in to the accessory server, we're going to select the Run Arbiter and Run Load Balancer options by checkmarking them. Once checkmarked, enter the IP address of the first core server. Once that IP address has been entered, enter the admin password. This we change from admin to admin123.
Next, we're going to need the MongoDB password. This password is only available on the first CMG server. In order to get it, we're going to need to remote desktop to that server. Once connected via remote desktop, we'll need to enter the Windows username and password. Here it is Pelco for username with a password of capital P lowercase el 289-9100. Once connected, click yes at the remote desktop prompt. Once at the desktop, we want to click on the File Explorer icon on the bottom and go to our C drive. From C drive, we want to go to Program Data. From Program Data, Pelco. From Pelco, Core. From Core, DB. From DB to Security. Next, we want to open that using Notepad. Copy the entire line from Notepad, then come back Accessory Server and paste that information in. We will not be checkmarking the Enable Second Accessory Server because in our example, we're only using a single accessory server. If you do have a second accessory server that you would like to enter, check mark this and then enter the appropriate IP address information. If the site plans on using the accessory server for DHCP, place a check mark in Run DHCP. Here we can set the IP ranges that will be used. In our example, we will not be using this for DHCP. Next, we have the NTP option. We will be using ours for an NTP server, so we're going to enable that. Once enabled, we're going to enter the correct date, time, and time zone. Once done, we are going to click Save Configuration. With our system information now saved, we can click on the status option and we can see that the Arbiter, Load Balancer, and NTP services are running. With the system configuration successfully changed, going forward we will now start using the virtual IP address. Our next step is to open a new browser and then type in the virtual IP address. Once there, the username is admin and the password will be admin123. Once at the virtual IP address, click on the device tab. From there, select and commission the accessory server. Then click on the plus icon located at the bottom of admin portal and select discover and add Pelco devices. It will take a couple of minutes and discover all the devices in the network. Once done, you can select and commission the devices for the video expert system. Once all devices have been discovered, selected, and commissioned to the system, it is now fully configured with dual failover. Thank you for watching. As always, if you found this video helpful, please remember to like and subscribe. And remember, at Pelco, we've got it all covered.